In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we keep the feast of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We remember that by coming to us as the Son, revealing to us the Father, and sending to us the Spirit, Jesus revealed the deepest mystery, that God is not distant and alone, but is three in one, a communion of love, who comes to make his home with us. In the words of a poet, God is beyond, beside us, and within. What does this mean? What does it mean for us? I'd like to talk about one of the greatest theological teachers, I think, in the Church of England, who can answer this question. His name is Charles Williams. Charles Williams. He was a member of a group of writers called the Inklings, who lived in Oxford about a lifetime ago. They all used to have a drink together. I think on a Tuesday evening in um, the Eagle and Child um, in the centre of Oxford, a pub in the centre of Oxford, and smoked their pipes. Um, Charles Williams smoked like a locomotive. Other members of this group were C.S. Lewis, you remember, wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Now, Williams has been called the oddest inkling. He was an extraordinary man. He was a devout Anglican, but he was also a member of a secret society for the study of the occult and magic called The Order of the Golden Dawn. He wrote wonderful novels that have been described as supernatural thrillers. He died in 1945, and he's buried in the churchyard of the Holy Cross Church in Oxford, in the centre of Oxford. Sometimes I used to go for walks there when I lived in Oxford, uh, where my last job was. It's a beautiful churchyard, wonderfully wild and overgrown, especially this time of year. It's a haven for wildflowers and bees and insects. Someone I met, who was one of the other chaplains um, when I was in Cambridge, wanted to visit William's grave there not long ago. And not many people seem to visit it. Paths are so tangled with long grass and nettles. He told me that he wondered whether he could find the gravestone. The place was quiet, deserted and still in the early evening. And just as he began to feel he might never find the grave, there was a movement at his feet. Out of the grass came a beautiful black cat, purring, rubbing itself around his legs. And then it turned and walked away. He followed and it led him straight to William's grave, where it perched on a stone and asked to be stroked, purring all the time. My friend said it was a little bit uncanny, it felt as if he was in the opening scene of one of William's novels, for unlike his friends C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, Williams did not set his books in imaginary worlds, like Middle Earth um, or Narnia, but our own world. And it is into this familiar world that magical powers, supernatural, spiritual presences come unbidden. Now, the person who told me this story also told me he met someone else who'd visited Charles Williams' grave, who said that he had had a strange, almost a mystical experience there. He somehow also got lost in the tangled paths, couldn't find the grave, and then from out of the undergrowth there stepped a beautiful fox, red fox, which looked at him and turned around and trotted down the path and led him straight to William's grave. Now, today we remember the feast of the Holy Trinity. Ancient theologians described the interrelationship of the three persons of the Trinity as being like an eternal dance. In Greek, the word is perichoresis. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit love one another so completely that their lives are mutually interwoven mutually interdependent. And the word perichoresis is also still the name of a dance. You might see if you go to a Cypriot Greek wedding in Enfield, this dance, they're not two dancers, but at least three. And they start to go in circles, weaving in and out in a wonderful pattern of movement. Charles Williams used another beautiful word like perichoresis to describe the mystery of the Trinity, what it means for us. And that word is Coinherence, coinherence. Our lives in the mystical body of Christ can become coinherent. They can become mutually interwoven, mutually interdependent. They can become like the lives of the persons of the Holy Trinity, as imaged in that wedding dance. Williams taught our love for each other gives us something like a magical power. As our lives become coinherent, 
we can begin to bear each other's burdens, he taught. This is something you know, to be explored with a spiritual director, not as with marriage, to be taken on lightly or unadvisedly. The idea of taking on one another's burdens. In a kind of exchange or substitution, William taught, people can make agreements to bear one another's burdens, quite literally, physically, regardless of the nature of the burden. Williams claims that the mockery thrown at Christ on the cross, he saved others, but he cannot save himself, was actually the basic expression of a universal principle. Nobody can save himself, but we can voluntarily substitute ourselves for others. We can carry their burdens, quite literally, even though these burdens may be spiritual, emotional, or medical even. For instance, if you know someone suffering from cancer or from grief, over the loss of a spouse or a child, you can take that cancer or that grief and carry it instead of them. These principles can work. William's taught among the living at any place or time, also with the dead and the unborn. You can take away the fear or pain from a deceased ancestor, bearing it in her place. That's the idea. It's like a magical power that you have as a Christian that no one's told you about it yet. Persons of the Trinity are three and yet one because they co inhere. Their life depends on mutual giving and receiving, substitution and exchange. Each of the divine persons lives for and through the other, not for themselves. And that's how they live in perfect union. In the church, we live the same divine life, a life that is shared at its very source, a life that is communicated from one to another as the sap of the vine is given through the greater branches to the less in Jesus' great metaphor in, the, in the, his image in the farewell discourses in St. John's Gospel. So what that means is very concrete. When you can't pray, another Christian can pray for you. When you can't carry a burden alone, another Christian can share it with you. This is what it is to belong to the mystical body of Christ. This is the work of the mystical body of Christ. And so the church realizes on earth the great co-inherence of the holy and undivided trinity and the co-inherence of the saints, which realizes perichoresis, the dance of the persons of the trinity. This is what we're part of in this church. And so let us bear each other's burdens consciously, willingly, and joyfully. For as Charles Williams wrote, blessed be he that has made us members one of another, all members of him. Blessed be he that has quickened among us the unity, exchange, and substitution of love, which is the pattern of himself. Blessed be he that he continually makes all things new. Amen.